Welcome to the UNCG MSAT Continuing Education Module on Evidence-Based Practice. This is Part 3, Sensitivity and Specificity. Please complete all 10 parts in the quiz that follows to receive your CEU. Let's begin. In Part 2, you learned about predictive values. A step up on the hierarchy of evidence-based practice is sensitivity and specificity. With go going into the details, just assume that sensitivity and specificity is of higher evidence-based rigor. And this, these are the values that we teach our students they want to look for when reading the literature and the evidence. The first we'll talk about is sensitivity. This is a test ability to detect those patients who actually had the disorder. In other words, we're looking at the true positive rate. Using our 4 by 2 by 2 contingency table from part 1, we're looking now at the vertical column of true positives, taking the true positive value and dividing it by true positive and false negatives. The mnemonic we teach our students is SNOUT. Sensitivity, capital S, small n for the sensitivity, and a negative, capital N, is good at ruling the condition out. SNOUT. So if a test is highly sensitive, we can say that if it is negative, we can be fairly confident that we can rule the condition out. Using the Lachman's as our example, if the Lachman's test has high sensitivity and it is negative, we are fairly confident that the person has an intact ACL. Specificity is the vertical column looking at our true negative rates. The mnemonic we teach our students at UNCG is SPIN. SP for specificity, positive, and in. A highly specific test means that if it is positive, we are fairly certain that the condition actually exists in the patient. Using our Lachman's as an example, if the Lachman's test is highly specific and it is positive, we're fairly confident the individual has a torn ACL. Using our similar gingerbread men from part two, with the same key, we can now look at sensitivity and specificity as an example. Here's our population with our true positives, false positive, false negatives, and true negatives, the four outcomes from our two by two contingency table. To calculate specificity, we take our true negatives, which are the brown gingerbread men without a positive sign in them, and we divide that by the true negatives plus the one false positive. In this example, we have a 95%. You may remember from part one, we are teaching our students that 0.75 is considered good. In this particular example, this clinical test is very highly specific. Using our mnemonic of SPIN, we teach our students that if this test is positive, we are 90% confident that we can rule this condition in. Looking at sensitivity, we take our true positives and we divide that by our true positives plus our false negatives. In this example, we have a 70% sensitivity value. This is somewhere between moderate and good. Using our mnemonic of snout, we can say that if this test is negative, we're moderately to good sure that we can rule this condition out. If we use the Lachman's to compare specificity and sensitivity, we would say that the Lachman's is much better when it is positive for ruling the condition in than it is when it is negative for ruling the condition out. In the next section, we are going to look at an even higher or more advanced level in the hierarchy of evidence-based practice with likelihood ratios.